Hi guys, today we are going to learn about various functions about NumPy library. So you guys are already famous with the NumPy library and its importance in data analytics and data science. But today we are going to we are going to go in much depth about the NumPy functions that are there and we are going to learn about other functions that can make your life much easier as a data scientist. So first what you have to do, you have to import the NumPy library as usual. So import NumPy as NP. Let's run that module. So first uh, run that statement. Uh, so first we would be learning about the random module. So you guys are already uh, familiar with the random module, the random dot random. But we are going to go in depth. So let's start with the very basic. Okay. So NP dot random dot random gives me any random value that is from 0 to 1 if I run it again this time for example I am getting 0 0.7 to 0 0.3 if I run it again I am getting 0 0.00011 if I run it again uh, sorry if I run it again I am getting 0 0.30 so you can see that every time I run I am getting a different random value suppose I want to generate same random value again and again then we use the function as a function seed and we provide a constant value to it so let's see np dot random dot seed let's provide any random uh, uh, let's provide a constant as one we can provide any constant as 100 12 etc let's provide one for the for this particular case and let's do the np dot random dot random let's generate a random value So it's a uh, yeah, I got a typo here. So it would be random if I run it again. So I'm getting 0 0.4170 again. If I run it again, I'm getting 0 0.4170 the third time also so as you can see if i use the seed function i would be getting the same random value again and again for the next thing what uh, we so you can see that we are getting the same random uh, a random value from 0 to 1 suppose we want to generate a random value within a given range so we use another function that is known as uniform so np dot random dot uniform if i provide Two values that is the starting point and the ending point it would give me a random value in floating digit floating number as uh, between the uh, starting point and the ending point suppose I provide 3 and 10 as my starting and my ending so as you can see you are getting a low and a high here if I run it I would be getting a value that is 8.04 that is between uh, 3 and 10 if I run the particular cell again I would be getting 3.00 that is also lying between 3 and 10 if I run this particular cell again I am again getting a value between 3 and 10 I can range this value between anything that is 1, 10, 100 uh, if I run 100 I am getting 15.52 so as you can see that we can generate a random value within a given range so for example if I want uh, random values within a given range for a certain length that is an array what we have to do we have to provide another parameter to it that is the size of the array so np.random.uniform If I pass suppose 1 and 100 and if I pass 10 as the length of the list, if I run it, I would be getting 10 random values lying between 1 and 100. So in order to generate an array of random values within a given range, we can use this particular function. And also as you know that if we provide a reshape, we can also generate a 2d array so 10 it can be broken down into 2 uh, 2 and 5 that is uh, there would be two such arrays of 5 length each so I am getting a 2d array of uh, range 1 to 10 and of 10 length okay that is uh, 5 cross uh, 2 cross 5 okay 
So this is how you would be generating uh, random values between a given range for a certain dimension also. So this is how you have to use uniform. So as you can see that this is giving me values that are in decimal or floating numbers. Okay. In order to generate integer values, uh, we have to use the function random dot random. So np dot random dot random if I provide two parameters that is the starting and the ending point I would be getting a random integer between this particular range if I run it again I am getting another value that is 9 here if I run this particular cell again I am getting 9 again that's a coincidence so this is how you would be generating an integer value between a given range and also if I give suppose 5 here I would be getting an array of size 5 where the values are randomly generated between the range 1 and 10 and suppose I want to generate a 2D array from this particular array I would be getting I would be giving reshape let's provide an even number here so uh, let's provide a, a, a value that is a multiple of some so let's provide 15 here so we can generate a 2D matrix of uh, 5 rows and 3 columns so it would be 3 comma 5 that 3 would be signifying the length of the array and 5 would be signifying the number of arrays so this would be giving me a 2D array that is of uh, 3 uh, of 3 comma 5 so 3 would be the number of arrays and 5 uh, 3 would be the number of arrays and 5 would be the length of each array. So this is how you have to use random and uniform to generate a single uh, a 1D array or a 2D array of either floating type in case of uniform or integer in case of random. So this is how you would be using a random module and this is how you can use random to generate any form of matrices or arrays and um, you could perform any kind of operations on them. So now coming to operations, suppose you have to find the max of a particular array. You already know that suppose let's create a array as a is equal to np dot rand int and let's provide parameters as 1 to 10 and of length suppose 6. So this would be giving me an array of length 6 from 1 to 10. So let's run it. Uh, also, I would have to provide random here. I missed it out. And I would have to, let's just print A. If I run this particular cell, I am getting random values from 1 to 10 of uh, length 6. So suppose I want to find out the maximum of this particular array. What I would do, I would do np.max and I would give a as my array if I run this I am getting 9 which is the maximum of that particular array that is A if I run np.min on that particular array I would be getting the minimum value that is 4 I got it now you would be learning about the argmax function what does argmax do it gives us the index of the maximum value so np.argmax of A would be giving me in this case it would uh, return me 0 as the index of this particular maximum number is 0 you can also check it by providing the array and providing this as the parameter I would be getting 9 which is the maximum value if I want to know the index of the minimum value np dot min would be giving me the minimum value of this particular uh, the index of the minimum value of this particular array or numpy array and of uh, if I provide that particular index to my array it would be giving me the minimum value let's run it it gives me 4 in order to check the value of np.argmin I can just run it again np.argmin if I provide a here it gives me 2 so as you can see 0, 1, 2, 4 is the minimum value in this particular array and it gives me uh, 2 uh, uh, which is the index of this 4. So 
this is how you would be using argmax or argmin in order to find out the minimum index of this particular array so this is how uh, you would be using the argmax argmin min and max now let's solve a problem suppose in the problem it has been asked that you have to replace all of the odd digits by uh, minus 1 so let's copy this particular code again and let's run it here i would be getting another array so this is 6 4 7 9 1 and 3 so as you can see these particular values are odd so i need to replace these values with minus 1 how can we do that we can do a if we can provide the condition here also if a mod 2 is equal to equal to 1 that is it is an odd number I have to change it to minus 1 and let's print A and see what our result is if I run this particular cell I am getting 6 4 yeah 7 is also an odd number sorry for uh, getting that wrong uh, so 7 is an also an odd number so I have replaced all of the odd numbers with minus 1 but as you can see that this particular uh, thing is in place suppose i want to replace but i do not want to change the array itself i would have to use the where function of numpy so the syntax is when you are, whenever you are using where in where you have to provide three conditions the first thing is the uh, three parameters the first thing is the condition on which it would act and if the condition is true what would be the value and if the condition is false what would be the value so let's uh, create another array let's copy this particular code in the cell and paste it here and run it again so currently our array is 888419 it's not such since the values are repeating i'm running it again so what i would do i would just take a much more bigger range so yes i am getting uh, i am still getting a repeating value i am just looking for a value that is not uh, still i am getting i am increasing the range again guys so 1 to 50 yeah so here i am getting all of the unique values i was just looking for an array gives, which gives me unique values every time uh, in all of the elements so as you can see here 21 31 37 48 and 46 if we uh, keep with the same condition that is a mod 2 is equal to equal to 1 uh, and we are replacing each and every odd element with minus 1 so what we have uh, and we uh, want to do it not in place we want to create another array from it which would be storing the modified array or where we are replacing the uh, odd numbers with minus one and not changing the value in the array so we would be using the np dot where function so np dot where first we have to provide the condition that is a mod 2 is equal to equal to 1 that is the num uh, the number in that particular array is odd if true i have i will change it to one if false i would be keeping it as a only so let's print it uh, let's run the same so we are getting minus one minus one minus one and 4 48 and 46 so if i print my a again you would see I am getting the same array that we had generated before which is which was not in the previous case as we were changing the value in place only as when we were printing a we were getting the modified a but in this case as you can see when we are printing a we are getting the previous array only and not the modified one the modified one is stored in an uh, another array let's store it in another array that is it this where returns me another array where the values are modified on the basis of their condition so let's save it as out out is equal to let's paste it here also let's print out in the same cell only so as you can see it is saved in an array out where uh, the first three values that is where the values were odd it is changed to minus one otherwise it remains the same value as our main array so this is how you would be using your where clause now for the last function for this video we would be using percentile for that let's run our this code again 
so we are generating values uh, let's generate much more values suppose let's generate 10 values uh, from range 1 to 50 and let's see what our array is so our numpy array gives me 5 49 10 33 let's sort it in order to see uh, what it shows so we would be using the np.sort and we would be providing a and let's print a so as you can see we have uh, it would return me it was not an in place sort so it would return me an array which is sorted so i would print a again so as you can see i have sorted the array so the, what our last function does that it provides us with the percentile we would be uh, solve, uh, knowing about the percentile function in the percentile function we would be providing two parameters that is the array and the percentile suppose 25 percentile so as you can see we have 10 values here 25 percentile would lie basically somewhere here where it is greater than 11 but it is less than 14 so let's check uh, so it has a value that covers uh, that is more than 25 percent of the array so let's see how it works so np dot percentile would be giving me i got a typo here percentile i would be providing my array here and if i provide 25 here let's see what we are getting as our output we are getting 11.75 so 11.75 ensures that if we are at 11.75 the 25% of my array is less than me. Suppose if I provide np.percentile50, can you guess what it would do? It would be giving me a value that would ensure that half of the elements in my array would be less than that particular element. So as you can see, it would be, so half of my array would be this and it should be generating a value greater than 18 and less than 19 so np dot percentile a comma 50 would be giving me 18.5 which is a value which is greater than 50 percent of the data and less than the rest of the 50 suppose i provide the percentile as 100 you might have heard of the percentile word in cat exams right where right? people say that they have got 99 percentile what that particularly means that they have scored a that is not the percentage that refers to that the score that they have scored in that particular exam is more than 99 percent of the people who have appeared for that particular exam so if i give 99.8 99.8 suppose if i run this particular code i am getting 48.7199 which is less than 49 because if you would have got 49 you would be more than the 100% of the entire uh, array or you would be uh, greater than all of the elements present in that array but 48.7199 ensures that you are less than 100 percentage and you are more than the 99.8 percentage of the percentile of the elements that are present in that array so this is for the video guys i hope so you learned a lot about the new functions that you can use in numpy in order to make your life easier so thanks for watching this video guys see you in the next one